will buy this wonderful day? Who will buy this wonderful morning and put it in a cup for me? Who will buy this wonderful morning? Who will buy this wonderful day? Who will buy this wonderful morning and put it in a cup for me? Good morning. We bless God for the opportunity uh, to be with you this morning. Uh, my family and I were pleased at the invitation and uh, just so delighted uh, at the church by the side of the road uh, to be cornered uh, by two of your members, one on Lorena and one on Russell. And, uh, and it is uh, just good to be neighborly, isn't it? Yes. Shall we pray? Lord Eternal, we thank you again for this beautiful day that you have made. We thank you for your lordship. We thank you for your love that runs eternal. Lord, we pray that you increase now our love one for the other. Bless us on this beautiful day. Thank God and amen. Of course, I'd like to uh, thank Rachel and Kit, Sonny, and Laura, uh, and all of the staff here uh, again for just the hospitality. Uh, even as we drove in, individuals in the parking lot were very friendly to us, and uh, the children are having a wonderful time. And uh, thank you. Uh, our thought for the morning is get aboard, it's going to rain. Hmm. A very old sermon, perhaps one of the first. <laughs> In 2006, after the destruction, the destructive reality of Hurricane Katrina, Vice President Al Gore released his landmark documentary entitled An Inconvenient Truth. In this documentary, he spoke of the very high rates of CO2 or carbon dioxide that have been continuously emitted into the atmosphere by the process of transforming fossil remains into fuel. Gore talked about how these pollutants are being trapped in our atmosphere and how they are causing our planet to heat at devastating rates. Some of the effects of this overheating are among other things the loss of much of the polar ice caps, the rising of sea levels, and the dissipation of fresh water. And of course, the death of polar bears. In short, these effects, as does the 7.8 earthquake that struck Ecuador this morning, they all postulate environmental catastrophe. Yes, I'm saying that because of global warming, hurricanes are harsher, tsunamis are more severe, and tornadoes are more torrential. I'm saying that because of irresponsible industry, sweatshop mentalities, and the concentration of waste and factories in lower income communities, that pollution is not only killing the polar bear, but as I heard my friend Van Jones say, pollution is now killing my cousin Pookie. Yes. Environmentalism can no longer be a conversation solely for the rich and affluent. A polluted environment is the reason you see that mothers are dying of cancer, fathers are dying of high blood pressure, and children are suffering with asthma. In 2016, one of the most pertinent questions of the day is how do we survive environmental catastrophe? So as we come into the realm of our story, uh, our biblical narrative for the morning, we find Noah 
preaching the same sermon that I am attempting to preach this morning. Get on board. It is going to rain. He preaches it for 200 years, but just a few get on board. And in God's own time, the Bible says that rain came and God, God's self, closed the door as the ark began its trek to safety. Only the people on the ship survived the storm. Well, I've got one point this morning, and then I will take my seat. Beloved, I want to report to you this morning that Noah and the others survived because they paid attention to the natural order and they heard God speak. Genesis 6 and 9 says that Noah walked with God. How many of us have lived long enough to know that you can make it through anything in life if you learn how to walk with God? I submit to you that the reason that Noah's family survived was that while all others were laying and playing, while all others were getting and gaining, Noah could be found silent in the still hours of the night, listening for the very move of God. Have you ever noticed that in the midst of inclement weather that the animals have already taken refuge? I was told that when the tsunami, when the tsunami hit Asia, a few years ago that nobody had to go back and retrieve the animals because the animals you see were already on high ground. Animals pay attention. Not only the animals have this sixth sense to understand viscerally that what is transpiring in nature, humanity is gifted as well to know. There was a time in our communities when we didn't uh, have a meteorologist. If you wanted to know if it was going to rain or snow, all you had to do was ask Big Mama what her arthritis and rheumatism had to say about it. Yes. When the storm broke out, we used to turn off everything in the house. It's a big storm. Mother would say, turn off the lights. Turn off that television. Hush, children. God is moving. We learn to pay attention to hear God speak in the natural world. When it comes to environmental catastrophe, I believe that the church ought to be intent and purposeful about hearing God speak. That's why I am on a mission to green the church. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh, that's why we are admonishing churches of all persuasion to develop green teams, as you have done here at First Church. Green teams whose ministry it is to always hear what God is saying regarding our environment. We at the church by the side of the road are always encouraged by your member and our neighbor, Bill Walzer, who reuses fallen timber to make beautiful and exquisite bowls and stemware. Right, and who also leaves the Lorena Street Safe Shakers, which is our neighborhood disaster preparedness program that prepares for the day, not if, but when disaster strikes in our community. We ought to say amen for Bill. When disaster strikes in our community, uh, we have to be ready. Therefore, in order to develop some more bills in the world, I am campaigning for the development of green teams in over a thousand black churches across the country so that those communities are not left behind in this international push to save souls and to save the planet on which those souls dwell. I'm here this morning pleading with us as a nation to slow down, to pay attention, and to hear God speak. Well, this is no newfangled theology for Americans. That's how we survived the middle passage. We heard God speak. That's how we survived after we got off of ships on Ellis Island 
we heard God speak. That's how we survived Japanese internment camps in Northern California. We heard God speak. That's how we survived the Great Depression. We heard God speak. That's how we are going to survive our current personal crisis, whatever they may be. Someone has come this morning to hear through the liturgy the voice of God. Church, get on board. It's going to rain. Beloved, if we are going to avert environmental catastrophe, we as seekers of what is divine are going to have to set the example. It is imperative that we begin to study solutions in clean energy, clean energy efficiency. We as a nation must learn to eat better foods. Our water bills and our energy bills and our garbage bills ought to go down in our churches and our families ought to follow suit. We have to be serious about recycling and weatherization and we must invest in clean energy ideas uh, that we learn from other institutions. Oh yes, the word is that we are facing environmental catastrophe. It may not come today and it may not come tomorrow, but believe you me, if we continue to live as we are living, as if we have infinite resources, and as if we can use this world up and find another to live on, then we are in for a rude awakening. The reality is that the church has always been for us the major agent for community change. And the stewardship of God's earth is still a spiritual conversation. Genesis 1 and 26 says that God gave us dominion. This is a spiritual conversation. And if we as a nation are truly going to move from a dirty energy economy to a clean energy economy, if people are going to strive in a green collar economy, one that creates jobs that are pathways out of poverty, then we the church must set the example and the church must lead the way. Get on board. It's going to rain. God bless you and God keep you.